Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mac here. Welcome back to another new video. Today we are taking a look at uh, casks. If you're not familiar with casks, you can hang out till the end of the video and I'll try to do a quick little job explaining what we're talking about here. But if you are, um, what you're here for is a, a way to create a, kind of a batch installer for casks. I think what really pushes something like cask or chocolatey, if you're on the PC side, over the edge as far as package managers and methods for installing software goes is the ability to create a batch installer that will install all of your apps at once. Uh, and so of course there's a few different ways to do this inside of um, Homebrew on OS X. Uh, everything from like creating a bash script to do this to what I'm going to show you which I think is just a very universal way to uh, set this up because it just uses plain text. You can use text edit if you're using uh, a whole bunch of systems that are all logged in with the same iCloud account you could use note. Basically any way Way that you're comfortable storing plain text, Dropbox, a flash drive, you can store this information and do things really quickly. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we want to take a look at all of the apps that we have installed with casks. Um, so if you're, of course, in your terminal window, uh, all you need to do is type brew cask list. And then this will give you just a list of all of the apps that are installed on this system. So assuming that you're getting a new uh, Mac, this is going to be super handy. Or, you know, let's say you're working at some kind of business and you have just a set of apps that you want to install on every computer. Uh, this is going to be handy. Basically, we just want a way to know very quickly everything that we have installed. So this is everything that is uh, installed on uh, my system. Okay, so like I said, there's a lot of ways to create kind of a batch installer, but I'm just going to show you what I think the easiest way is. So inside of a plain text document, or well, it could be any text format, really, just you just need to be able to copy and paste. Uh, you're going to type out the commands that you would use basically to install an app. So of course, if I'm in Homebrew and I want to install an app, let's say that I want to install Sketch. Up. I would just do something like brew cask and then give it the install command and then say SketchUp. And then we could paste that into our text document. Now, if you don't know this, uh, I assume most people do, but if you're in a terminal window, you can very quickly do two commands just by adding a semicolon. So if I wanted to say, have my computer like say, uh, say, hey, this is uh, your computer. And then immediately after finishing that, um, run a ping command uh, just to, you know, test whether or not my internet is working. I don't know. We'll ping Google. I could hit enter. Hey, this is your computer. And then it will immediately start pinging Google and showing off my impressively crappy internet at the moment. Uh, it's not always that bad, but uh, it is at the moment, I guess. So go ahead and kill that. So that's basically what we're relying on here. We're just going to create a stream of commands over in our text document and uh, use those to install all of these, uh, all the apps that we want really quickly. So if you go ahead and just type out brewcask install, we can go ahead and copy that text and then just add in whatever app, add a semicolon, paste in brewcask install, go on to our next app, uh, we'll say Alfred, maybe, okay, semicolon that. Next up, uh, we'll say Adam, you know, brackets. Yeah, so I was thinking of like a real world test and so I thought what I would do is I would grab a, you know, a dummy computer and install a few apps on that to set up a screen recording. So basically anytime I record on a, on a Mac, there's two apps that I need. They are a Switch Res X, which if you don't know about, it's just a cool tool that lets you add some custom screen resolutions. And then the other one would be Brew, Cask, Install, and Open Broadcast Studio. I think it's just called OBS and Cask. Yeah, there we go. And then we would just do OBS. Okay, and that's it. We have two commands for our two apps that we want to install. Uh, now again, keep in mind, it's the semicolon that makes this happen. So you can add as many apps as you want. I'm going to add the two and we'll do a little bit of a test here. I've got a uh, flash drive plugged in here. Okay, maybe I do. There it is. And we're just going to save this as a text document so that we can copy and paste. And I think we're ready to do a, uh, a test here. Just for the fun of it, I'm also going to add another command. I'm going to do Adam because I think I might actually have one of these three apps installed on the computer that I'm going to use. Okay, whatever. Okay, so here I am over here on my uh, dummy computer to test this out. Uh, I actually <laughs> found uh, my mother's Mac. So should be pretty clear, guarantee there's not going to be anything fancy or pre-installed on this computer. Nothing like what I would have. Uh, if you're looking for evidence that this is not a computer that I use, we've got uh, 
uh, a pretty much default uh, OS X dock. Um, she's actually replaced Safari with Chrome. I guess that's not actually too surprising. Uh, and then this is my favorite here. We've got a file on the desktop, uh, Zumba video dot uh, So uh, we're going to go ahead and open up the terminal. And all you need to do, of course, to install Homebrew is copy a little bit of code, uh, which you can get from brew.sh, or you can scroll down to the description and grab it. Go ahead and copy that. Let it install. Now, of course, I did go ahead and install Homebrew, so I'm going to go ahead and kill it without much of an issue. Uh, once you have that installed, you would just do brew cask install. Whoops. Sorry. Brew install cask. I said that backwards. Okay. And then that will install casks that will allow you to uh, go ahead and install uh, programs this way. So next up, we have a flash drive with our text document. And in this case, we're just imagining that this is a brand new computer. We don't have any software installed on it whatsoever other than homebrew and casks. So what we're going to do is copy this kind of batch installer that we made, paste it in the terminal and hit enter. And now it's just going to do its thing. It'll run through and install all of the apps. You can see here, this is cool. I wanted to throw a little bit of a curveball at this. So what I did was before recording, I actually already installed Switch Res X. And I wasn't sure what would happen, but of course, Cask just realizes, hey, you've already got this app installed. Uh, it says, if you want to reinstall it, change your command. And then it skips on to the next one and is going ahead and starting installing OBS. So that's pretty awesome. That's about perfect as as far as what I would want to happen. All right, so one other thing I did want to mention, every once in a while when I'm installing a cask, I get a little bit of an issue where uh, where it wants a password, which isn't that big of a deal, of course, if you come in and you see that your, that your terminal needs a password, you just put in your password and you're all good to go. Uh, but of course, this is an issue with a batch installer like we're trying to create. Um, so I thought maybe you could do just add sudo to the beginning, you know, give yourself admin privileges and then, you know, brew cask install. Uh, we'll say, what's a small app? Rocket or something. And then it asks for a password. We give it the password and we get an issue uh, basically saying that running homebrew as root is dangerous, which probably is true. Uh, they just won't let you do it. You can't run homebrew as an admin, as root, as a super user, whatever you want to call it. So that's a bit of a problem. It's I, I don't think it works quite as advertised. You can't just paste in a bunch of text and then literally just walk away and never come back. I think probably at least a few of the apps are going to ding and want a password. Now, if anyone else actually in the comments like knows a better way to do this, I'm happy to hear about it. Um, this is just the easiest and I think most user friendly way that I've found to make it happen. So yeah, feel free to leave a comment if anyone has a better idea or a better method for uh, like batch installing stuff. I'm very interested to hear it. And, but that's about it for the batch installer. It's pretty easy. Um, now, of course, if you're not familiar with casks, there's actually a lot of really great guides out there online. But the basic idea is that it's it's a package manager. Uh, it's a simple we'll just say it's like a software installer that kind of serves as a replacement for the app store the mac app store that's not really true but i'm trying to simplify it as much as i can basically the idea is that installing apps that you download off the internet is if not dangerous because of the potential to get viruses and uh and malware and things is very messy every app you're that you download you're relying on to have its own method for updating and doing maintenance on itself and some apps are good at that some are bad some are going to want you to go out to a website and install and download a DMG file every time you need to update and replace that over the file in your application folder. Some apps are good at updates. You know, it's, it's a mess. So the Mac App Store does like an okay job. You know, the Mac App Store will handle updates fairly well and that type of thing. But the issue that you run into is that there's just a lot of apps that aren't in the Mac App Store. Like, let's say I want to install Chrome, you know, and, and you may, that, it may seem obvious to you that, oh, hey, it's just not in the Mac App Store. It's weird that... Uh, a torrent app shows up whenever you search for Chrome in the Mac App Store. At least I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Uh, but if we want to install Chrome Viacast, we search for it, and there it is right there. We have uh, Chrome, Chrome DevTools, we have Chromium, we have MK Chromecast, all sorts of apps. So actually, if you if you want to see just every app that's available via Cast, you can just do brew search and then dash dash casks. And it will bring up every single app that's available for download via cast. And you can see it's just an enormous list. Uh, there are very, very few apps that I've tried to install that have, do not have a cask available for them. And it's just, I think, overall, like a better, less messy way to manage software. It, uh, but anyways, that is all for this video. Thank you, everyone, for uh, checking it out. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I will see you in the uh, next video.